Asman niman çekize Oxşamağın bulutlar Asta asta yüz gülmekte Sözü kaçman ne bezide Qar bulutlar katlılıqda Dosatın Ben asmanla karayım ben Asman niman çekize Karanguda yurtuzlar İmir çimir çaklamakta Bazı yurtuzlar küçük Kalkanlar için durmakta Yüzümdeki yaşlarım Yamgur arlaş tam çımakta Ben koyaşkı karısam Atta bir işimle kurutmakta Güzel çağlarım neyse Ben hıyal kapatmakta Ben şu kişi Çek düşkten Kevra asmağa bakmaktı Ben asmağa karayım ben Asman niman çek üzer Eğer çıksam bu kapazdın Tıbırak ne sövgüm var Kalgan günahlarım ne Yer astığa külgün var Kemre asman ne külgün var Kemre asman ne külgün var Kemre asman ne külgün var Ben asmanı karayım ben Asman niman çek Kenra asmanı karayım ben Asman niman çekse What is the meaning of my music? For what do I sing? I think I try to take the great music and add my own way of expressing it. I want to take this music and use it to touch people's hearts. What I think Perhad Kalik is telling us through this quote is that even more important than the words he is singing is the fact that he is able to bring a minority's voice to the, vo to the masses. He's able to take Uyghur music to the voice of China, reaching over 415 million people. And this is exactly what we aim to support and recognize at the Prince Klaus Fund and through the awards. This power that culture has to unite and to make us think beyond the frontiers of space, identity, and differences. Your Majesties, Royal Highnesses, Excellences, Laureates, dear friends, welcome to the 2015 Prince Klaus Awards. And what a wonderful list of laureates we have this year. A list that will take us from music in China to performing arts in Nigeria, from film in Syria to photography in Iran, to name but a few. I'm very proud to present them to you today. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, where together we'll be celebrating their work and achievements. If you still haven't noticed by now, I'm the new director of the Prince Klaus Fund. So, if... <laughs> 
So, <laughs> if you see my hands shaking a bit, you'll know why. Um, our program this afternoon will present to you three films showing the 2015 Prince Klaus Laureates, one more of perhaps beautiful songs, as well as a specially commissioned Journal Rappé, Wrapped News, uh, covering different state of affairs in the world. And this will, be, this will be presented to you by Jilly Baghdad and KT. Jilly will then wrap a special song titled An African in Amsterdam, and we count on you to sing along with them. So without further ado, I'd like to invite uh, Hank Proper, the chair of the Prince Klaus Fund, for his welcome words. Hank, please. Thank you, Jumana. You started very well. Thanks. <laughs> Your Majesties, your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, dear laureates and friends of uh, the Prince Klaus Fund. We are experiencing difficult and confusing times. In such circumstances, it is not an easy task to maintain one's composure, to put aside feelings of resentment and anger, to keep an open mind. Even reasonable people run the risk of being blindsided and becoming caught up in the same kind of fanaticism they wish to fight against. The Prince Klaus Fund has, from the beginning, made it its mission to see things in perspective, and preferably from the perspective of the other, to give people in difficult circumstances the opportunity to develop themselves, to support artists who, by the nature of their work and ideas, positively influence their reality, and to respond when cultural heritage is threatened to protect or to restore it. These are big, yes, you may say, lofty goals. I do not say this out of pride, rather with feelings of modesty and at the same time, in all modesty, confident and aware of our task. It is important, and even more so in these confusing times, to clearly decide where we offer our support, to understand the perspective of others, and to help talent that is able to make a difference. It is with limited resources a limited staff, but with tremendous support from our global and ever-growing network that we aim to make a difference where it is most needed. During the impressive commemoration ceremony last Friday in Paris, the French president, François Hollande, was referring to the city of Paris as a city that enlightens ideas. Ideas, not the fires of destruction. Historically speaking, this was a claim that can only be seen as right. The president was talking, of course, about Les Lumières, the Enlightenment, and other eras in history when Paris formed the nucleus of the free world and the center of world's thinking and creating. No doubt, the president was at the same time speaking of the present, confirming the desire to maintain an open mind, an enlightened spirit that, I would say, in a magical way, creates the opportunity to cross frontiers, to see the point of view of the other, and at the same time, creates the inner force to defend these principles and ideas when they are under fire. We know thanks to the many people in our network, that there are many cities, many places, sometimes unknown, not heard of, often under all sorts of fire, where people create and connect, illuminate new worlds, enlighten their environment with art and ideas. 
It is with these people that we try to work. It is these people we proudly present today. Doing this, we are grateful for the support of the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Dutch Postcode, the Lottery, our sponsors and torchbearers, our advisors, and those who are engaged in our work. Let me be clear. You do not need to be a geopolitical strategist to realize that the need for supporting people who make a positive difference in these times is only increasing. The Prince Klaus Fund does not simply and proudly bear its name. It bears forth an ID that culture, especially cultural interaction, helps people to see each other and not as essentially different. No, the other, in the terms of the philosopher Emmanuel Levinas, a person with a face. If our mission, all the people in our network can contribute even slightly in achieving this, then that is in itself a worthy goal. I wish you all a splendid and inspiring afternoon. Thank you. I've never seen an African troop. I always see American troops. Why? I believe that one of the main problems we have in Africa is our image. As a filmmaker, I think I need to do something about it. Why are you watching this shit? It's our roots, man. If you don't know where you're coming from, then how do you know where you're going? Jean-Pierre Bercolo's work is playful, mostly based on satire, but is also deeply rooted in, in, in what we know now in the post-colony that is North South Africa. And they call that culture, African culture. His films are full of humor, and his humor asks very important questions how we live with our perception of our internal Africas. Alors comme ça, il paraît que vous faites disparaître les sexes des hommes rien qu'en les saluant. His work is mixed with many interesting uh, beliefs and rituals that almost look like magical realism. When he says Africa is an invention, it's a feeling that we could be sick, but we, without knowing what we're suffering from, or what disease we have, and how could we design the reinvention if uh, we don't even know that we were invented? The president, uh, which is banned in Cameroon, is a reflection on these breeds of African uh, presidents that keep uh, changing laws to remain in power for a long time and, and, and what it means for the average population. He is an African filmmaker saying that it's not what you think about Africa. This is another vision of Africa, maybe an unexpected one. Latif al Ani, Mokim Fi Baghdad, Mawali Delf Samir Timutlati, Fi Karbala. What 
is so lovely about his work is that you really see how the society, the Iraqi society was in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. He's interested in everyday life. So we see how diverse, how different the Iraq that he documented is from the Iraq that we know now. طموحي أن تكون هذه الصور دليل أو وثيقة ليطلع عليها شعب العراق القادم أو الأجيال اللاحقة لتطلع على ما كان عليه العراق من تقدم وازدهار في مجال الثقافة والصناعة They're absolutely fantastic, actually, quality-wise. And it's very sad, but his photographs gained additional value because of the destruction that happened in Iraq. I do performance to synthesize the people about the problems we have in Nigeria. I use my body as an instrument in my art. Jalili Atiku is all about how performance is intervening in a daily life. He drops himself right into the heart of Lagos and we see him struggling with the realities of the street and we see uh, the public interacting with him. When you watch his performance, you have a feeling of loneliness sometimes, which is very touching. To me, uh, Tiku is rewarded for using elements of his culture to transmit a passionate, a bold, and a very sensitive message about uh, human rights, about justice and equality. What Jalili is doing is incorporating old traditions in a blend of contemporary performance and tradition. In that way, he has become a very inspirational figure for a number of artists who are now exploring performance as a viable artistic form. Of course, naturally, I have voice. Everybody of us has voice. But I need to put my expression in a visual language for people to see. And it, it makes me feel free like a human being. Oksana Shatalova is a visual artist, a curator, and a critic who lives in Woodney, Kazakhstan. Her voice raises above her country 
as a defender of feminism. She has been shown now in uh, four continents. She, she's been curating uh, in biennales uh, in different places. She works within what developed as a post-Soviet Union era aesthetics that deals with the remnants of the problem of the transition from socialism to capitalism. Он довольствуется тем, что знает, где обретаются металлы, и тем, что извлекает их наружу. Но ослепляющий блеск их не имеет власти над его чистым сердцем. Не поддаваясь опасному безумию, он более радуется их своеобразной формации, таинственности, их происхождению и места пребывания, чем обладание им. Since uh, 2012, I work in the School of Theory and Activism Bishkek, or as we call it, Stab. To answer this question, we need to clarify our institutional contours, and more importantly, the difficulty of such a clarification. So, these contours are already there, they are already very clear, but they are not at all there. What I like about her installations is that they are so unexpected and she has fun and wit in them, but at the same time, there is a deep message, a, a very profound communication of the, the women's situation in them. They may look uh, funny, they may look uh, light, but actually this is something that, is, that has a, a very profound thought behind it. S'il veut rester au pouvoir, il respectera les Sénégalais. The song's name is um, Doh Aksa Goh. Doh Aksa Goh is about like personal participation, like do you put your hand in how your community is moving forward. What I love about Yana Mar, we're fed up, uh, is that they are a collective of both journalists and hip-hop musicians that use uh, a kind of new language that they invent together just out of frustration uh, with their government, the president that uh, refused to leave, to communicate uh, directly to so many people. Yana Mar. À l'issue de cette campagne, nous avons pu mobiliser 380 000 jeunes et nous les avons appelés à être présents pendant l'élection présidentielle, à surveiller le scrutin pour qu'il n'y ait pas de fraude. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons pu contribuer à changer de président au Sénégal. Yanamar is looking at a new type Senegalese, at the new citizen, the citizen who's engaged, whom they are reaching and whom they are mobilizing to act. This is really the movement of the future. How does song, dance, art mobilize the youngster and make them vote? In the context of African rap, Yanamar has become a very important political voice. Their impact is uh, reaching outside of Senegal and it is influential in other West African countries.
Weit dem Kille da. Nun da hat dem Kille da. Weil es auf den Namen Alde Utro macht sich darga bargen Kille da. Ey, Ata. Surhan wal pranik lirin ne Ugurlukça yigim kelido Ey apa Apa Dayım dey tın yaxşı adam bul de Yamanlardın süra bıraq tur de Üz üz engen yıkın rağ bul de Ata Ey Ey Apa Ey Yaman emes bir adem buldi Arzulirim minin cemel geçti de Uylayın özel için Sen digen dek bir kotun mu aldi Umak içki nevren mu buldi Muşundak bir güzel çağlarda Erkini Ey apa Silerkini Ata Silerkini Apa Silerkini Ey Bu dünya şunda dünya ken Hiç bir insan kalmalı mı yok ken Hayvan kulu bu günler var ken Ah Ey ata Ey Ey apa Ey Ey Ey Yümrük ata Yümrük Yümrük Apa Şükürü koda Bergen günleri şükürü Şükürü koda Bugün şükürü Bergen günlerin şükre Şükre hıda Bergen günlerin şükre在这个同质化的音乐世界里，它是一股陌生化的音乐力量。
Ehad Khalid is an amazing singer-songwriter and he sings it in a pop, rock, ballad way which is getting right to the hearts of, uh, of Chinese people right now. It is not a classical form but it has classical undertones and I think that it's an amazing way in which tradition is reinvented. <laughs> Ferhat Kalik comes from a Uyghur community, a minority group in China. His appeal is the fact that he uses his unique raspy voice to speak to young Chinese directly in a very authentic way in the context of a, a very commercialized culture. <laughs> He used that commercial platform to establish and communicate his message also by his lyrics that are very poetic and are perceived as very authentic. What was very interesting was all the viewers on the internet wrote in to say that they were touched, they were emotionally moved by this Uyghur voice. I think he's a very relevant uh, singer, artist right now because he's actually changing the face of a fairly unknown minority in China. <laughs> I was at my parents' place out of Tirana and they knocked at five o'clock and they asked me what are your political opinions. Fatos Lubonia was arrested and imprisoned at a very young age for his writing and his opinions. And uh, what is amazing is that in his writing, in his novels, in his short stories, he stays true to himself. Lubonia has been called the Albanian Mandela, and that's why I think that today, after all these years, he's still considered as one of the leader of opinion of his country. They had uh, some writings, my handwritings, which were hidden in the roof of the house of my uncle, who was already arrested. And it was considered agitation and propaganda against the regime from three to 10 years. And I was sentenced seven years for these writings. Fatos Lubonia is a public intellectual who is fearless. And he's not only an excellent writer, but uh, he is also the editor of a very important magazine, in English, The Endeavor. He has consistently remained completely independent, and he will speak out on any issue independently if he thinks it's needed. And he uses, in addition to his writing, the medium of television to communicate to a large audience in Albania and beyond. Factor stability is nationalism in Balkan, Luftrakist in Balkan. To me, this man stands as a whole. You cannot take him as a political activist or either as a journalist, whether in his writing, whether in his opinions, whether in, in his leadership. All his life is his struggle for uh, nationalism and human rights. Nuestros debilitados cuerpos no pueden bailar 
al ritmo de nuestro hambre. Grupo etc. get themselves involved in what's happening in the world, not only in the issue of poverty and human rights in Argentina, but also in the world politics. Instead of direct confrontation, their technique is to create a humorous situation in public space in a very light-hearted way. Basically, the blurring of the boundaries between art and life is very present in Etc.'s work. I'm a part of a movement. I'm a part of the international terrorist. Somos parte de una gran corriente. Somos parte de algo mucho más grande, que es toda la gente que está disconforme con este sistema y que cuando puede eh, lo, lo expresa. Podríamos definirlo con que es un movimiento que nuclea a individuos, a grupos en distintas partes del mundo, que básicamente se dedica a discutir de una manera filosófica y poética qué significa el error en este momento del mundo y qué ha significado el error como vía de liberación eh, para la humanidad. El proyecto de... La gente proponía el cacazo o algo, algo parecido. Algo... Porque nos tratan como mierda y mierda no somos, somos personas. I like their humor, I like their uh, uh, sarcasm. They have a cutting edge in how they present themselves, and there is courage. There's bluntness, and I like that. Hey, my name is Kont M. Chang. Everyone calls me Kulu. It means grandfather. This is because I studied Amakwesi many years ago, in 1980, and we're just coming out of independence. Amakosi theater is community-based. They did not come from an elitist background. They know the society, and they managed to keep their critical edge, and they persevere under very difficult circumstances that we know in a place like Zimbabwe. Amakosi Theatre not only works on the stage with the professional actors, but they work with the public. Anyone can be an actor in Amakosi Theatre. What Kont Mlanga, who founded the company, has been doing, he's been training a whole generation of young people who relate to the art of theatre, to express themselves and to talk about the situation in their country. Most impressive is always the working with difficult issues. Uh, HIV AIDS, for example, when it appeared earlier and with all the uh, taboos around it, they managed to break that in rural and in townships. We have an outreach program. An outreach program purely when we des I designed it, it was for uh, young people coming to Amakos. So now I am living full time in the village so that we can then redesign the outreach program. And we hope this outreach program will grow. Yeah. 
one thing that Kant Melange has done recently, he's opened to radio stations because many people who don't come to the theater do listen to the radio. So that's where he moved his theater. I think that's fantastic and it's something the Prince Clausen wants to support. شاهدتها أنا أسامة محمد غادرت سوريا صباح تسعة أيار ألفين وحداش I learned the link between Justice and beauty from my family. I was very impressed by the poetic quality of um, Osama Mohammed's films, portraying the human condition, the relationship between individuals and power structures, and the philosophical and cultural elements of Syrian life. The visual quality of his films is extremely uh, powerful. Osama Muhammad works under very difficult circumstances uh, of censorship uh, and meager resources for filmmakers. Silvered Water will be a definitive work in the genre of documentary. What do you do in an age where everybody can take films on a cell phone? be happen to the Syrian citizens if we could not have the images, if we didn't have such evidence. I think the tragedy could be more and more and more and much horrible because we are facing an enemy of civilization. <laughs> أحدهم أخذ الكاميرا مني بدأ السينما رحت ألحق به لأستعيدها I think it's a very controversial work in the sense of the limits of art in a time of conflict and I feel that um, I'm moved by the the, also the, the impotence which we feel, but at the same time, I think it, it, it brought me to my emotions in a way which was not just a documentary. I, I felt so often on the edge of crying as I watched this documentary. نعم. لو لم أبقى حيا سأوصي لك بالكثير مما قنصت. تبقين. وتوصي لي وأوصي لك أقوى الخيارات البقاء I'd like to invite uh, His Royal Highness Prince Constantine, Honorary Chair of the Board of the Prince Klaus Fund, to the stage in order to present the awards to the 2015 Prince Klaus Laureates. Prince Constantine.
Yo. Good morning, ladies and gents. This is the Rap News. I'm KT. I'm Gilly, presenting the Rap News. Yo. Straight out of Senegal, we're bringing the Rap News. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the Rap News. Now, without further ado, let's get straight to the topic. Because 2015 has been pretty hectic. Conflict in Syria has led to flows of migrants. Migrant? Man, I thought there was refugees. Yeah, but refugees apply to the third world. Okay. In the western world, they're calling them migrants. Okay, anyway, but they already entered Europe. More than half a million looking for a new hope, running from terror and civil war they never asked for. Hey, hey Europeans, they're knocking at your door. All eyes on EU, so what you gonna do? EU, EU, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, migrants here for you? EU, EU, what you gonna do? What you gonna do, migrants here for you? Welcome them with open arms, like they need her. Oh, wired borders, weapons and arms, like they were thugs. Ha, all eyes on EU, we watching and we see. You. You've been preaching and teaching democracy and freedom. Now they left their houses behind. Will you give them a new home? But this year's also been a good one for the terror businesses. Mass killing, hostaging, we've all been witnesses. Oh yes, they've been restless from the two Paris attacks, the shooting in Tunisia to the bombing in Iraq. See? Gili, we got ISIS, Al-Shabaab, and Boko Haram doing all of their dirt in the name of Islam. Come on, killing innocent people is not written in the Quran. They're not helping the Muslim cause. They, they do, do us, us more harm. harm. They want to take the world back into darkness. Cold-blooded thugs, heavily armed and heartless. Cowardly hiding behind the name of God to justify their hatred towards mankind. All around the planet, horror and devastation is what they always leave behind. They want us to live in fear, and they are called terrorists. They threaten the very core of our society, our freedom and democracy, freedom of lifestyle, opinion or religion our human rights of equality, education, or justice. Now it's time to realize they can only be defeated if we are united, if we respect one another in our differences. Cause see, terrorism does not apply to only one race or a religion. And if you ever meet one of them, please don't panic. Just give them a hug and tell them you love them. Now, let's take the subject to civic movement. In Africa, the youth taking their destiny into their own hands. Willing to build a brighter future for their homeland. Urging leaders in the continent for improvement. See what started in the north as the Arab Spring moved south, turned into fall and took down regime. It's the birth of a new type of civil society. Young, dynamic, shaking up reality. Yana Mar in Senegal. Filimbi in DRC. Palais Citoyen in Burkina. And the Sofa in Mali. Taking stance against dictatorship, abuse of power, bad governance and constitutional violation. Right. Now they are the nightmare of these political dinosaurs <laughs> handling power like their family business. Being sentinel of democracy and good governance, they are strongly dedicated to clean up this mess. There you have it, ladies and gents. That was the rap news. I'm KT. I'm Gilly, presenting the rap news. Not always good news, but, but hey, hey, that was the rap news. Let's just be optimistic that the next edition will be better news in the rap news. But until then, take, take care, care yourself and your loved ones. Do it. Do it. Do it. So what's going let's, on now, Jimmy? Let's Gini? loosen up a bit. Okay, Bobby. Let's call Bobby on Our this special one. guest, Bobby. Bobby, come on. Oh, I'm an alien. I am. I'm a legal alien. I'm an African in Amsterdam. Come on, come on. Oh, I'm an alien. We are. I'm a legal alien. I'm an African in Amsterdam. Okay, okay. 11.45, just landed, it, just landed, it. so called airport, welcome by the guest stops, being my escort, questioning, double checking my passport, well, that episode, I'm gonna fast forward, grey sky, heavy rain with the cold breeze, uh -huh. I'm dressed warm but think I'm gonna freeze, the rain doesn't seem to bother anybody.
everybody Yo. See it's kinda crowded Like a bike body yes. Everybody pedal it My name is uh -huh. Welcome to the land of Kong Pot and Cheese yes. Already missing the West African scent But what I've seen so far is gonna be some fun oh. Come on! I'm a Nelian. I am! I'm a legal I'm an African in Amsterdam One more time! In the water in the city, it rains for no reason Almost no summer, winter below freezing I'm loving this weather Just teasing I'm on my bike, doing my Dutch right. Riding slow, I ain't stressing much no. Taking my time, that's my Africa Dutch uh -huh. But everyone seems to be so in the rush yes. Tram, buses, cars and bikes uh -huh. The city traffic is a real smooth mess Woo. Tourists, bars, museum and park well, That's part of the city's gazelle nest Let's go! The food, smashed potato is a main dish mm -hmm. Eating laxer leaves, herring, raw fish Whoa. But loving the sweet stuff, strong waffles and cakes uh -huh. Ah, so like a risk of fries and shake yeah. Me and some friends just entered a coffee shop They wanna chill and smoke some pop sure. I was curious, had a couple of pops uh -huh. Coffee my lungs up, this was some strong stuff Woo. I'm feeling heavy, think I'm having a problem I got out of there, high in the care lab yeah. Two blocks down, can't believe what I just saw what? Is it the weed or my mind playing tricks? Uh. My friend just laughed and told me hell no yeah. We was in the middle of the red light district uh. This is the picture from my African eye yeah. I'm loving this city where I met my Woo! wife This is the picture from my African eye uh. No matter the weather, you'll be my sunshine yeah. Come on! Yeah, yeah Okay, Everybody. let's go oh. When I was 16, I dropped out of school and I went to photography course. It was an amazing time in Iranian history. It was the peak of reform and lots of reformist newspapers, they started to open and I was covering all the events. And of course, after the revolution and the war, photography became important. In that time, we were maybe four or five professional women photographers. But I never took no for answer, so actually I covered anything I wanted. I like to bring across stories of people who are invisible and they don't get attention, and not many people really care about them. I 
I don't want to be there that when they blow up a building or when they attack because I'm not that brave. But I would like to take pictures of the effect of the decisions of politicians and lives of millions of people. Nusha Tabakolian is perhaps one of the most interesting voices to emerge in photography, video art, and photojournalism in Iran in the last decade and a half. What's interesting about her work is that she brings out the most intimate portraits of Iranian society. She moves between photojournalism and photography as art or video as art seamlessly. And in both cases, the aesthetics that she projects is highly intimate and yet very well connected to larger discourses that we see today in arts. After 2009, when it became difficult for me to continue my photojournalism work, I didn't really make decision. It was imposed on all of us not to take pictures after 2009 for some time. And I decided to change the style of my photography to be able to work and to tell stories. And um, I always say that when they take your nose uh, and you are unable to breathe through your nose, you can always open your mouth and continue breathing through your mouth to survive. So for me, kind of changing my style was to survive as a photographer and to continue my work. I think a photographic style brings us to some interior unknown of these individuals that she photographs in both moments of strife, uh, Kurdish women fighters, freedom fighters, uh, the urban middle class, hipsters. I feel like there's something mysterious about these images, but yet also directly telling us about a political context which is not didactic, but is in the landscape. And this subtlety, I, I, I really admire in her work. The money that I received from Prince Klaus Award, I wanted to do something back for the people that I always photograph in Iran and outside of Iran. And I thought this is the best opportunity I can get to help the refugees. And um, as a photographer, you're always out there and you take from people, which is important because without photographers, there are stories that will be untold. So I think our work is very important. But besides that, you know, it's a personal thing. I wanted to do something small back for the communities. She worked in Lebanon, in Syria, in Iraq, in Yemen, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf. But I think she has always been interested in the issue of women from the very beginning until the very end. She does say that if a society loses the voice of a woman, it loses itself. And I find that commitment to her community is fantastic. We have to learn how to maneuver our way in our society, and she does that in a very beautiful way. For me, the most important thing is to just be good at my work. And I think with that, you can show to many people that their idea that they have, it's wrong. I just do my photography because my world is my work. So I just continue to do that. And if I change some people's mind, I will be very happy. And if not, then it's not really my responsibility to change people's idea. While Nusha Tabakulian as a photographer, as an Iranian young photographer has contributed, I mean, taking into consideration how young she is, really I would wonder what would happen when she's 85.
Your Majesties, Your Royal Highnesses, dear uh, friends. Um, the main topic of the Prince Klaus Fund is obviously um, culture in the context of development. But in fact, and as you probably have known, um, Prince Klaus Fund is about people, about extraordinary people making a difference in their communities and the world at large. It's about you, showing different perspectives, telling important stories. The Prince Klaus Fund aims to be a bridge builder between people and organizations all over the world, who with very different means and different media are basically striving for the same cause, a better, more just, and free world where human dignity is respected and creativity and expression are applauded. Prince Klaus Fund sees it as its mission to connect people and cultures and provide more insight into our diverse backgrounds, but often very similar motivations, traditions, emotions, and aspirations. And we do this at a time when we seem increasingly obsessed with ourselves and confused by the world. The same technology that allows us to selfie our whole life and share it with the world also gives access to the world's information. One would assume this brings us closer to one another, but more often we find ourselves confused, deeply puzzling and disturbing images from bomb towns, blown up monuments and executions in, for instance, Syria, refugee streams in Greece, Turkey, Jordan and Lebanon, terror attacks in Paris, Nigeria, Beirut. We have opinions about African lions and American dentists and are surprised about the global outrage about black peat discussion in the Netherlands. The far has come to our doorstep and what was near is now in the global eye. And we are easily shocked and often compelled to judge without knowing the context. So how to make sense of this all? How can we understand the other if we look at the world through our narrow, self-indulged lenses? Is the complexity of politics, culture, economics at global, regional, and local level comprehensible at a time of rapid change and permanent crisis? This is a confusing time in which people seek predictability and simple answers instead of nuance and insight. So my answer to the question about how to make sense of this all takes me back to the core of the Prince Klaus Fund. It's people. And as uh, maybe Bill Clinton would put it, it's all about the people, stupid. And even though we all come in different colors with interesting and different habits and cultures, at the core, we are the same people with aspirations, fears, humor, hope. We are all susceptible to exploitation, manipulation, abuse, aggression. We all respond to opportunities and react on fear. Why do we need an image of a dead child on a beach to realize this? We must invest in bridge building and in understanding, not because it is a nice to have, but because the world is increasingly connected. Our futures are intertwined. And it's not by building walls that we can retain our current ways. We have to evolve together and learn to live with one another. Call me naive, I'd call it smart. Because in the long run, there really is no second best alternative than to trying to understand one another, building trust, not hate, insight, not ignorance. And in the case that this, and this, if this is the case, then we better try and enjoy it, instead of seeing it as one big struggle. Though I guess getting people to dance in this room is a big struggle, but at least you managed to get us to clap. So just scroll down the list of laureates and marvel about the diversity and the quality 
of human creativity. We are here to honor 11 laureates who come from various parts of the world and who make it their lifetime commitment to bring back the human perspective. In their unique voices, they are telling us that there is no inerrant threat, in that we are all humans sharing similar stories, joys, and suffering with the same basic needs. They ask us to listen and look beyond the screaming headlines and the comfortable stereotypes. Like Nusha Tavokilan, with her subtle images of women in modernist Iran. And Yeli, Yeli Atiku, and etc., both in their own way provoke audiences to actively discuss and engage in issues of local and global impact. Osama Mohammed and Oksana Shatalova stimulate fresh viewpoints in situations in Syria and the position of women in Central Asia. Through her work, Nusha tells us to listen to the unheard voices of women who cannot sing and to look through her own personal view to the uncertainty, the fear, suspicion, and loneliness of people in her surroundings. And I'd like to take a sidestep by a quote that she gave us following from her work. Her observations lead her to the statement, a woman's voice represents a power that if you silence it, imbalances society and makes everything deform. Something I can only support with all my heart and particularly my brains, although it should be a no-brainer for all. I come to a close. In 2010, my brother Friso said the following in his award speech. Following some reflection, I have come to the conclusion that in most cases, all that is imaginary, unreal or virtual, is the frontier itself, and not what is beyond. It is a border marking the limits of our own reality, or what others want to make us believe is reality. Across that border, we are most likely to find another reality, someone else's reality. And I'd like to add, which will soon be ours. Nusha, may I ask you to come to the stage? Your Majesty, Your Royal Highnesses, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. When I first took a camera in my hand at the age of 16, never in my wildest dream did I imagine being where I am now. I must confess, for someone like me who all the time doubts her work, receiving this award is a life-changing recognition. Unfortunately, we live in a time where hatred, division, and violence dominate our thoughts. So many live in fear and uncertainty. People draw up walls between themselves, seeking safety in isolation. Art and culture can bring down those walls, create understanding, open eyes, and teach tolerance. Be proud. Be proud that you honor the arts outside of your borders. For truly send a message to the world when you have the confidence to praise outsiders. <laughs> that message is we are not afraid. That message is, we stand against division. That message is, 
we look towards the future with hope. When I received my first paycheck, I told my parents, thank you for everything. From now on, I will take care of myself. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for trusting me at the very young age to be myself and to give me the absolute freedom. Of course, I never managed to take care of myself. My mother still, she cooks for me every day. <laughs> I have come across so many women who inspired me without knowing pushing me to become a better photographer just by who they are. They taught me to fight for my beliefs in a respectful manner and to never give up no matter how strong the heat wind is. I thank them all. Thank you to all my friends and family who come from all around the world to celebrate this very special moment for me. Princess practice. When you abdicated from the throne, you said that one of the most important decisions of your life was to marry Prince Klaus. We have a very different lives, but I am united with you in that thought. It was me who asked my husband Thomas to marry me. And like you, that was also one of the best decisions of my life. <laughs> thank you. I want to thank Prince Klaus Fund for this amazing work that they do. And I want to congratulate other laureates of this year of Prince Klaus. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, I don't know how to go after this. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Nusha, for your beautiful and candid words. We're almost at the end of our program. I just have one more thing to do, which is thank all the people who have helped us to make this possible. I'd like to start by thanking the royal family and uh, the Royal Palace Amsterdam for providing us with this fantastic venue for yet another year. Being in the Royal Palace truly makes all the difference. Thank you for your hospitality. We'd also like to thank the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Dutch Postcode Lottery for their long-standing support. We're very proud that this year, the Dutch Postcode Lottery has decided to continue supporting the Prince Klaus Fund for five more years. Thank you. Special thanks are also due to the luxury hotels of Amsterdam for providing hotel rooms for over 19 years now. I made the calculation the other day. I think it amounts to over 11,000 nights or something. And um, for their support this year, specifically for the first Prince Klaus Fund Benefit Gala. Our thanks also go to all of our collaborators and our torchbearers and all those who have supported our work throughout the years. Last but not least, um, I'd like to give a warm thank you to the members of the award committee, to Fariba Derakshani and the award team, as well as the rest of my colleagues at the Prince Klaus Fund, who have worked very hard to make today, as well as the rest of the days of the year, uh, very possible. Thank you so much. One last note, and I forgot my card over there, so I hope I won't get it wrong. Um, please allow the, the royal family and uh, the press and the laureates to go out first. Then uh, there'll be a reception here, so you'd have to move over there in order for the strong men around to take out all the chairs. Um, when you leave, you'll be given a goodie bag. Well a goodie bag of the 2014 laureates. In it, you'll have uh, an award book that is, as always, designed by Irma Bohm. 
as well as a special gift that was specifically done by us, uh, for us by Nusha. So I hope you enjoyed them. Once again, thank you for being with us this afternoon. I hope you've enjoyed the evening, the afternoon, and uh, I hope the Nusha and the 2015 Prince Klaus laureates have broadened your world. They sure have broadened mine. Thank you. Thank you.